first things first, I wanted to say hi to everyone and I'm so thrilled that my Serial Chiller t-shirt, jumper even, has shown up. I absolutely love it. You'll see in the outtakes the, uh, the game I had when I first ordered it, but yes, XL fits. Brilliant. This week's episode is all about swimming alone. It's something that I do really often. I have done it from the start and I absolutely love it. But there's a few things that I do to make sure that I stay safe and we'll take a look at those now. One of the first things I like to check is that the air I'm going to swim is as safe as it can possibly be. So I want to know what's the wind direction, what's the current doing and is there anything I need to be wary of. And you can see all that in a uh, video I've previously found, planning an outdoor swimming adventure. Take a look at that one. One of the things is that you can get out of the water just whenever you like, whenever you feel that you've had enough that you can just get out. So on a beach like this, that's pretty easy. It's pretty much the same all along. There's not a big shell and I can just get out. So um, that's great knowing that the get out is there if I need it. So aside from if I can get out of the water, I'm also interested to know what's going on with the flow. Is there a strong current? And if so, I need to check that when I get in. In I go. Ooh. Oh, got the device, just gently bobbing up and down. Yeah, look at this. There is a bit of tide running because I'm already going sideways. Uh, so uh, it's going to be a bit of a push. And the first thing I'm going to do is swim into that flow because what I want to do is be cautious with the amount of energy I'm using so that I can get myself back. Swimming on my own, I don't really want to go in somewhere where it's going to be quite a feisty swim, where it's going to be really lumpy and I'm going to be fighting. Apart from anything else, an onlooker might think I'm in trouble, which is not what I need when I'm having a nice swim. Before I get in the water, there's a couple of precautions I take. One of them is to let somebody know where I am, how long I'm going in for, and uh, roughly what time I'll be out. So to do that, I use an app called Safe Tracks. That tells my shore contact or my emergency contact what I'm up to and it tells them where I am so it um, it tracks me and they can click on the little um, icons and they can see how fast I'm moving or, or slow in my case um, and it also tells them it will alert them if I haven't called in to say that uh, I'm going to be late if I haven't pressed the button to extend my time it will alert them that I'm not back on time and so they need to do something so that's really handy as, a, as an app and it's a good peace of mind for when you're in the water alone. There's a few pieces of kit which I think are absolutely essential for swim on my own. So um, I've got a couple of tow bags um, and I'll run through the differences between these tow bags on a, on a later blog. But um, the beauty of these things is you can put all your stuff inside, they're nice and dry. Although I do use an extra dry pouch for my phone. Um, and then you're self-sufficient, you can tow this thing along behind you you are super visible, which is really important when you're on your own, uh, or, or even when you're in a group, but it's important that any other water user can spot you. So the great thing about them is they make you visible, you're self-sufficient because you can carry your stuff, and the beauty of that is, if the sun gets a bit much, if you get tired or anything like that, you can just stop, you can get out, and I've done it before, you get out, you use the kit that's in here, dry off, put the clothes back on, and uh, head back on over to the car so um, you're not forced to stay in the water or walk around in your swimmers just want to get out get dressed and get moving uh, and the other thing i think is great about these is that they allow you to self-rescue sort of so I, I guess if i was to get stung by a jellyfish or i get cramp i can just get hold of this hang on to it and just uh, regain my composure work out what i'm going to do next and then I'll hop on, I can get myself out or I can maybe carry on swimming, we'll just see what happens. But great for a self-rescue. On the subject of being safe and being seen, I've got a lovely hat here. So this, plus my tow float, really makes me safe, I think. Um, the other bonus is it keeps the wind off. So if I've got a neoprene hat, or even if I haven't, it's a great thing to have on top, just to keep the wind off your head. When I'm swimming alone, I'm absolutely aware that it's down to me to keep myself safe. I need to be wary of what's going on around me. I need to think about what's going on with my body. And if I start to feel uh, a bit tired, or well, more than a bit tired, if I start to feel really quite tired, then I need to think about getting out. Equally, if I start to suddenly feel really comfortable in my surroundings, 
and I think, oh, I could just bob here all day, isn't this lovely? When perhaps the conditions aren't that lovely, that is a warning sign. That is my body saying, Rach, it's time to get out, come on. Um, there's nobody there to tell me if my stroke starts to look a bit rubbish, if my hands start to crab, it's something I need to be aware of myself. It's my own safety that's in my own hands. I try to always swim where I can get out. If I'm on my own, where I can get out pretty easily and pretty sharpish. So I don't swim really far out. I swim fairly close to the beach, um, especially in an area where there's some traffic. It is important to stay somewhere safe, visible, and where I can definitely get out. In order to help myself stay safe though, I just make sure I follow all those rules. I check that my, um, my swim route has got some get outs. I check what the drift is doing so that I can swim against that first. And I'm mindful of my surroundings. I make sure that I'm visible with a hat, a tow float, and I use a tracking app so that somebody can tell where I am. If I'm just going off the beach at lunchtime, then I'll tell some colleagues, yeah, I'm just going for a swim. I'll be back in half an hour. But if I'm doing something a bit more extensive or further away, then I'll use that tracking app. It's not all bad though. I absolutely love swimming on my own. I love the solitude. I like being out in nature. I like it when you spot some wildlife. It's superb being out there on your own. And just sometimes the time to have a bit of quiet time to yourself is absolutely great. You just have to think about doing it safely. If you like what you've seen this week and you've enjoyed the, um, the vlog, please drop me a comment, give me a like, subscribe, click on the bell, you'll know when the next one is, but effectively I put them out every Monday lunchtime just to brighten up your week. See you next time. So I'm pretty excited. I've had my delivery, I think, of my new swimming bag. A lady called Gemma Blore is um, making stuff um, towards her charity effort for Aspire when she does the Solent Swim. So I thought I'd buy one and have a little look. I mean, uh, let's have a look together. Let's hope that's what it is. is something else that I've ordered. Brilliant! It's my cereal chiller jumper. Well, let's try that on anyway. Thanks Anna. <laughs> See it's a bit tight on my boobs here. This is L size which is supposed to be an 18 which I am. Um, I'd say I'll be changing it so if anyone else needed to have a little look to see what the sizing's like, here we go. Well I'll try again later with the bag when it arrives. <laughs>